Welcome to Greeley County, the least populated county in the entire state of Kansas. Greeley County, besides being the least populated county in Kansas, which has a lot of small counties, um, has a very interesting history and has a, you know, I think a, a lot of uh, kind of fascinating things to um, learn about. I'm starting this video inside my vehicle because it's a typical Western Kansas day, even though the sun is out and shining, it's cold, it's very windy, and uh, I'm sure the sound, I've had sound get messed up on my videos before, so I wanna try to you know, make sure you can hear what I'm talking about because Greeley County is, to me, very fascinating when I started learning about uh, the history of Greeley County. Um, one of the interesting, interesting things is that Kansas was started in 1861. That's when it became an official state. But Greeley County was the final county to be organized, and it wasn't organized until 1879. So it was still 18 years until uh, they were able to organize the county out here. So obviously, they were moving west, and, and people were trying to settle, you know, move farther and further west. So this was, even when Kansas was a state, this was largely unorganized. And, you know, it's, it's named Greeley County after a man named Horace Greeley, who was a editor of the New York Tribune, and he coined the phrase, go west, young man. And that was to, you know, obviously encourage westward settlement of the United States back then. And so he was so influential to some people. We're going to learn more about him as we go throughout the day. Uh, he was so influential, especially out here, is that almost everything in this county is named after him or has something to do with him, including one of his pets. The other thing that was significant was the railroad. And before the railroad came out here, people would move out here and they would basically settle and they would start a town. And it was kind of random of where the towns would be. They would kind of start the town where they lived and hopefully they could encourage people to come out here. And there was no railroad when that started and or when people started settling those areas and calling them towns. And so when the railroad came through, which is where I'm sitting right here along the railroad, um, all the towns kind of end up lining up along the railroad because that was the only way to get things to here or from here. Uh, you can imagine there weren't roads uh, anything like they are today. And so it's very difficult. So you had to kind of line up with the railroad if you wanted your town to survive. And not many towns survived. There are only two towns left in Greeley County. And they are actually right next to each other along the railroad a little bit down the way. I'm right here on the eastern edge. And this is along the railroad. It is Kansas 96. And Kansas 96 goes all the way from Wichita all the way out here to Colorado, which is where we're gonna be on the west side. So we're gonna start this trip by following along the railroad and um, the settlements and towns that are along that till we get to Colorado. We will take Horace Greeley's advice and from here we will head west and we will see what we find along the way. First thing I find interesting is I'm taking this dirt road along, it parallels 96, and um, the, you can see the old power lines that are on the other side of the railroad from where they are today. So obviously this must have been maybe the original road. Uh, obviously they were, like I said, had the power lines. It's, it's kind of crazy to see them all just abandoned power lines that are still standing and they're just across the railroad track from the more modern ones. To talk a little bit more about Horace Greeley, so he was, um, besides being a newspaper editor, he was actually a politician as well. He was an abolitionist. He, you know, fought very hard for Kansas to be admitted as a free state. He actually, in 1872, he ran uh, for president against Ulysses S. Grant, and he passed away while the votes were being counted. He, he obviously lost, um, wasn't going to win, but he was a very well-known figure uh, in across the United States for his uh, his obviously his political beliefs, and then you know as the editor of of the New York Tribune. So um, he was highly regarded by a lot of people. Um, and so our first town 
town that we're coming across that's a ghost town is Whitelaw. And yeah, you know, I know I mentioned how all these towns were named after Horace Greeley or something like that, but um, you think, well, this isn't named after him. Well, it's not, but it is named after one of his good friends and uh, is a man named Whitelaw Reed. And actually, we're going to talk about Reed, the, the ghost town of Reed, a little bit later. Uh, but White Law was a guy's first name, and once again, close friends with Horace Greeley. And so, when they ran, probably when they ran out of uh, things they could name after Horace Greeley, they started naming things after his friends. And so, White Law, what's you know, it's post office for about two years, and uh, probably was not that large, um, you know, right along the railroad. And and I got out here and you know explored. There's some things to see. There's some kind of abandoned things that have to do with the railroad. I can go over and, and see where the, the railroad siding, the old railroad siding is that's kind of grown over now. And obviously this was a stop along the railroad. So I'm sure there were, for that reason, there were, you know, community here and it was, a, you know, a place where people could bring their, bring their stuff here in um, Greeley County to get moved from one place to another. We are now in Tribune, Kansas, which is the county seat. It's the largest town in Greeley County. About 60% of the population is here in Tribune, named after the New York Tribune, which Horace Greeley was the editor of. Um, this would be a perfect town for one of my Small Town USA videos. So um, I'll just show you around and you know talk about a little bit of the history of the town and. Uh, and then you can see all what's kind of here. Uh, a lot to see, pretty interesting place to explore. Here we go through downtown Tribune on the main street. And like I said, it was named after the New York Tribune, which operated until 1924. It was the largest newspaper in New York City at the time. Um, so a great little main street as you head down through the area with buildings on your left and right. You'll see more of those here in uh, just a little minute. Uh, a few other things around town that are cool to see. There's the Horace Greeley Museum as the county seat. You know, the, the old courthouse here is gonna have a lot of old stuff in it. I was not able to go inside, uh, but this is the golf course in town, Prairie Ridge. And what I thought was interesting is that you just drop off your, uh, your fees and head out and play golf. There really wasn't anyone around that day. They have a nice little memorial here and as you can see, it was slightly windy on this day. We head over to where I'm assuming they have the county fair. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of old, you know, uh, rides and, and things. And, and I'm not sure if these are rides that are still in working order. Some of them looked definitely were not in working order. I'm not sure I'd ride that. Uh, <laughs> But it's almost almost like a uh, graveyard for an old county fair. Uh, definitely, that one looks interesting, but I don't think I would ride that. And uh, the old school is about 100 years old. A neat thing that across the street they have the playground marked from 1890. And that's where the playground was. It's pretty neat that they have that there. And like a lot of schools out there, they have rodeo. And so you're always seeing the a rodeo ring somewhere and a lot of school pride they have all the state champions listed and in this day everyone was gone they were obviously cheering on the team at the state basketball tournament and the local store has all the names pretty cool for the small town 
basketball team. Literally just down the road from Tribune is the only other incorporated town in Greeley County, and that's Horace. And obviously Horace was named after Horace Greeley. And believe it or not, this used to be bigger than Tribune. You can, you can actually see Tribune down the way. Uh, it's kind of interesting how close the two towns are. In the whole rest of the county, there are no towns. Um, and this, you know, was was originally right along the railroad, obviously again, and the people here had, um, you know, big dreams to make it into a, you know, they called it, they called it Little Chicago because they wanted it to literally be a, you know, they had big dreams for it. And it battled with the tri Tribune for the county seat and lost. And the one thing Tribune had, uh, I guess more plentiful was the access to water. And until about 1920, Tribune and Horace were about the same size. And then, you know, after that is when Tribune got bigger and Horace, you know, kind of remained the same and then has gotten much smaller. Horace had for a while, the Tribune didn't have is they had the ability to sell alcohol here until about 2008. So that was one of the last remaining businesses, you know, recently. And then since uh, they changed that law here in the county and Tribune, you can get alcohol there, then that kind of faded away here. So it feels like a ghost town. It really does. There's so many, um, you know, abandoned buildings and a lot of the roads in town are dirt compared to Tribune. So very, very interesting. They're so close to each other and very, very different.
that is the end of the two towns in Greeley County. And so now we're gonna continue west down uh, K96 and we'll see what else we can find.